Uh, to remind you that don't know me, I'm Matt Albright, Director of Center for American Values, and I am proud to be uh, also a representative of the veteran community here in Pueblo, Colorado. I myself am not a veteran. This town is built on service and sacrifice, but we get to talk about that certain group, the veterans. And of course, these gentlemen right here, the Pueblo Four, they're our Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. I'd like to point out that 43 million men and women have served our nation since the Civil War. 43 million. That's more than if you take the entire population of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, Idaho, Montana. That's about 42 million people live in the Mountain West. You take every big city, every small town in between in the Mountain West, about 42 million people, yet 43 million have served our, in our nation's military. Yet, there have only been 3,509 Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. All of those names are behind me. The names you see behind me are the names of every Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. There's a little dispute on the borderline. North Koreans say the USS Pueblo was in North Korean waters. US still says that we never crossed the border. But we, that ship was captured. They sent three battleships. They were fired upon by aircraft. And that was just a little scout ship. So those sailors had not much to come back with. Several of the sailors died, but they were captured. The majority of them were captured for 11 months. They were starved. They were tortured. They were beaten repeatedly by the North Koreans to give information that they didn't have. Instead of giving that information, when put to a photo op, to say, hey, why don't you tell everybody back in the United States that we're treating you well. We want you to sign these documents to say how well we're treating you and take this photo. Well, they had this bright idea to give the Hawaiian symbol for peace, which is their middle finger sticking up to the North Korean photographer. And they told him it was the Hawaiian symbol for peace. And the North Koreans proudly sent this picture out to say, look how well we're treating them. They all gave us the Hawaiian symbol for peace. A very famous incident where they were telling the North Koreans really what they thought about the treatment. But every five years, the living survivors of this come here to the home of heroes, stay at this hotel, come down to the Center for American Values, and do a similar tour like this, and they celebrate their reunion, their get together their brothers in arms, their connection that they're going to have for a lifetime going through that very, very difficult experience here in Pueblo, Colorado. It was dedicated in 1919 by then President Woodrow Wilson as a memory to those lost in the Great War. The war to end all wars, they thought it was, because it was so terrible that they would never have war again. World War I was so bad, they truly thought that we would never have a war again. So they dedicated this to the veterans of World War I, hence naming it Memorial Hall. But Pueblo's little piece of history is more than that. Because Woodrow Wilson, President Woodrow Wilson, goes to the Union Depot and leaves Pueblo. Not far outside of Pueblo, he has a stroke that debilitates him for the rest of his life where he can't communicate. And some even say, and uh, we might have put some video because it's a little, uh, I don't know the truth to it, but they say that for that last year, because he died about a year later, that his wife actually made the decisions saying what Woodrow would have thought and said. So technically, we may have already kind of had a female president, at least for a year, at the end of the Wilson administration. At least rumor says that, that it was Mrs. Wilson or First Lady Wilson making the calls in that late term. Zebulon Pike was an American, and he was in the United States Army ordered to explore this area. You can imagine there wasn't these big trees here. They were little. These buildings were here. What can you see exactly this direction if this all that building wasn't there? Pike's Peak. 
He said in his journal for days, they kept going towards the purple cloud in the distance. They, they theorized right around this area on the Arkansas River is when they realized, well, that's not a cloud, that's a mountain. And it was November. And he takes a small group, says, we're gonna get to the top of that in November. Hence showing how nice our climate is in Pueblo. That he thought, boy, it's nice. I can make it up that mountain. <laughs> and by the time you hit Colorado Springs in November, it wasn't 75 and sunny like it was here in Pueblo. They, they did not get too far. There'd be many years before someone actually ascended to the top. But they would name the mountain after him, Pike's Peak, after Zebulon Pike, who once again, that connection to Pueblo, Colorado, where he first noted of seeing the grand Pike's Peak. And he'd go on to retire as a general in the U.S. Army. It's really great to see the energy and, and real spirit of this city going on all the time down here. Um, the, my office is right up there, and if I have to work late, I love opening the window, hearing the kids playing in the water. And I just realized a place that I used to drive past, living in Texas, driving to Colorado Springs, going like, oh, that place. And now this is my home, and being a military brat, moving around, is the longest place I've lived in my life, and I'm pretty, pretty proud of it.